Hello and welcome to Precalculus Lessons 4.3 and 4.4. We're going to be working on some right triangle trig as well as a few of the trigonometric identities. So a lot of this stuff is going to be done just using your basic SOHCAHTOA and this is just your sine, cosine, and tangent ratios. Uh, it's just an anagram to remember them. Remember the sine is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent is equal to the ratio of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So, example one. The first thing I'm going to ask you to do is if I tell you one random value, such as the tangent of theta is 12 over 5. Okay. And I tell you that pi is less than theta, less than theta, which is less than 3 pi over 2. Okay, and I'm like, all right, so what is the sine theta, cosine theta? I didn't ask you theta. I'm not asking you the angle measurement. I'm just asking what's the sine, the cosine. Hopefully you can find the tangent. I'm going to just go ahead and put that one in. Um, then across from sine, remember, we always want to do cosecant. Across from cosine is secant. The way I remember this is if you look at any pairs, because like sine and cosecant are reciprocal functions, one is sine and one has a co. So it's sine and cosecant. And then you have cosine and secant. So there's only one co in each pair, tangent and cotangent only one co per pair. Okay, so um, what this tells us here is that um, you should be drawing a triangle. So this tells us a couple things. One, draw a triangle. And two, you better draw it in quadrant three. Okay, so you want to draw your origin Remember, your right angle always needs to be on the x-axis. Okay, so my triangle is going to look like this, where the right angle is on the x-axis. Now, I know that the tangent is a positive 12 over 5. However, both my x value and my y value are negative. So I know that's negative 5, and that's negative 12. How do I know that? Well, I know that because this is my angle, and given so Toa, right? Toa is opposite over adjacent. So opposite that angle is the 12, adjacent is the 5. So it's got to be negative 12 over negative 5. Okay, then using the Pythagorean theorem, I can find my hypotenuse, because this is not a unit circle, right? That is definitely not 1. Because this is 5 long, this is 12 long. Hopefully you know your triples. If not, you can do Pythagorean Theorem. So you got 5 squared plus 12 squared equals hypotenuse squared. So your hypotenuse is actually going to be 13. Now, you're get, you need to find this to find the sine of theta. So the sine then is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's actually going to be negative 12 over 13, where the cosine would be negative 5 over 13. Cosecant would be negative 13 over 12. Secant, negative 13 over 5. Cotangent is a positive 5 over 12. Okay, I got those by just taking the reciprocal of these three. Okay. Cosecant is a reciprocal of sine. Secant is a reciprocal of cosine. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. All right, the next thing I'm going to ask you to do is to find a reference angle. So in example two, I want you to find the reference angle. So if I gave you an angle such as 210 degrees, Okay, um, you have to use an acute angle to use sine, cosine, or tangent, right? So the reference angle 
Here's how you find it. One, you draw in standard position. Draw angle in standard, and that's just a symbol that means angle. In standard position, so just like you did in 4-1, how do you draw an angle in standard position? So 210 looks like this. So you'd have one part goes this way, and then let's see, that's 90, 180, and then another 30 or so. So that would be a 210 degree angle in standard position. Okay. Then the next thing you're going to have to do after you have done that is find a sharper pen. Okay. Is find the angle to the x axis. So you got to find angle to always the x axis. Got to be the x axis. Okay. So that's this angle right here, is what we're looking for, the measure of that one. So even though this, this whole angle is 210, this little angle here, that's our reference angle, just from the x-axis to our angle, in which case that would be 180, so I'm going to subtract 180 this time and I would get your reference angle, or raw as I like to call it, would be 30 degrees. Okay. All right, what if uh, on this same, I'm going to do this on the same diagram. What if I had like 150 degree angle? Well, so that would pop up like right here. But you're still going to the x axis, right? So now that's my reference angle. And guess what? Still 30 degrees. Okay? They have the same reference angle. Okay? So you're always checking the angle to the x-axis. Okay. Now it's a little bit trickier if I give it to you in radians. Like let's say I give you an ugly angle like 7 pi over 9. And you're like, uh, I don't know what that is. Well, step one, draw it in standard position. Okay. So you know where 9 pi over 9 is would be here. So it's, it's somewhere here. Does that make sense? In that it's definitely going to be in quadrant 2, somewhere in there. So what you have to do, because we know this is pi, right, which would be 9 pi over 9 would be there. So it has to be before that. So we're still looking for this angle. But what you want to do is you just are going to want to subtract that to find your reference angle. Okay? Because like on this one, we subtract 180 from 210, but this one we subtract 150 from 180 because it's in this. So we're really just doing the same thing. We're taking this whole angle pi and subtracting our angle to get the reference angle. Or are we finding technically it's supplement? So you have 9 pi over 9 minus 7 pi over 9, which is equal to 2 pi over 9. So your reference angle would actually be 2 pi over 9. And remember, I use 9 pi over 9 because that's pi, or 180 degrees. So you're all, always either going to add 180, subtract 180, add 360, subtract 360, subtract from, excuse me, 360. Okay, next I want you to take some pictures of these identities. I'm just going to flash up a few identities for you that I want you to take a picture of. Okay, so the first one are the Pythagorean identities. Okay. Now, this is the only one I actually remember, okay? And then it has two, like, um, identities that are similar, where here I've just subtracted cosine from both sides, here I've just subtracted sine from both sides. You also need to know these, but if you can remember that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1, you can usually come up with these. Um, these, if you divide everything by cosine squared in this first one, well, sine squared over cosine squared is actually tangent squared. Cosine squared divided by cosine squared is 1, and 1 divided by cosine squared is secant squared. So that's where these, this next one comes from. Now, if you take this first one, you divide everything by sine squared theta. Well, sine squared theta divided by sine squared theta is 1. You'll get this third one here, this one down here. Cosine squared theta divided by sine squared theta would be cosine.
cotangent squared theta. And then 1 divided by sine squared, cosecant squared. Okay, so really there's nine identities you need to know, but they're all based on this top one. Okay. Next, you got some quotient identities that you need to know. These we've been studying quite a bit. Okay. So the quotient identity of tangent. Tangent of theta is equal to sine over cosine. Cotangent is cosine over sine. Hopefully you know that. These are a little bit trickier to think about. They're called co-function identities. And when you see them in uh, print, they're even more confusing. But really, if you think of co as the word complement, it makes a lot of sense. Here, let me get my hand out of the way. So if you think of co as complement, it makes a lot of sense. So these are the complement function identities. So sine and the complement of sine, or cosine, are complements. What does it mean to be a complementary? Well, 90 minus that angle. So sine and cosine are complementary. Secant and cosecant, the complement of secant, are complementary. I might write it 90 minus theta, or I might write it pi over 2 minus theta, but that's just 90 degrees also, right? That's what it means to be complementary. And then, of course, tangent and cotangent are also complementary. Um, hopefully you know these. I just wanted to get them in print, but the sine of theta is equal to 1 over cosecant, or cosecant is equal to 1 over sine. Cosine is equal to 1 over secant, or secant is equal to 1 over cosine. Tangent is equal to 1 over cotangent, or cotangent is equal to 1 over tangent. Okay. Another way to think about these identities, and kind of the last thing I think I'm going to cover here on part A, um, is let's see, example 3, and this will be the last example today, um, just using these co-function identities. So, if I asked you what the sine of 42 degrees is equal to the cosine of what? That's my question. The sine of 42 is equal to the cosine of what? Well, since sine and cosine are complements, the sine of 42 would equal the complement of sine of the complement of 42. So really what I'm asking you is what's the complement of 42? So your answer there would be 48 degrees. Okay, another way to ask that is I would say the tangent of 90 minus theta degrees is equal to the cotangent of what? Same question, just a little bit different. So if I put this 90 minus theta, well, that would just be theta, because the complement of 90 minus theta is theta. I might even do it like in radians. So what if I said, okay, the secant of pi over 8 is equal to the cosecant of what? Okay, and this is where you'd have to use, oh man, I missed that bath, huh? And this is where you'd have to use that um, cofunction identity, okay? Because that's the only relationship between secant and cosecant is that they're complements of each other. So the first thing you'd have to do is find the complement of pi over 8. So you would do that by taking pi over 2 minus pi over 8. So you're going to times that by 4 over 4. So you really have 4 pi over 8 minus pi over 8 equals... 3 pi over 8. So the secant of pi over 8 is equal to the cosecant of 3 pi over 8. All right, and that should do it. So this is stop part A. All right, and I'll be back with part B another day.